taking on Southern Miss in Fayetteville. The Hawks looking to give Southern Miss their 15th loss in a row. That'd be the longest losing streak in the country. I will say it's raining outside. Hopefully the Hawks can make it rain inside. Tip off about five minutes away. Media day ended about three hours ago. So Sully, I guess it's time for me to get the howl out of here. <laughs> in Jonesboro for the Red Wolves. And when you come to North Little Rock, you always find some fun fans. And if your team's playing like the Charging Wildcats, you get face time. Yeah! Can't wait to hear from Coach Bilal. All right, I know you can't wait to get inside now. I know it's <laughs> kind of cold outside. Hawks scored a season low 16 points in the first half. Their second lowest point total of the season. Man, a lot of repetition going on here in Jonesboro, and I'm not talking about going back to the GoDaddy.com bowl three years in a row. Two things you probably notice that's different about this live shot. One, I have a jersey on that says Sully on the front, and it's a number seven now. It's almost like Clint was the cure, because these patients seem to forget their condition when they saw this NFL defensive tackle. You don't have to stand up. Oh, you don't have to stand up at all. <laughs> he, he wants, oh, he wants okay. to. How you doing, sir? Um, you don't have to stand up on my account. I don't know why you. Well, you know you're kind of bigger than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Nice to you meet you. You don't have to stand up. You have to I stand. can. I just want to prove to him that I can. You can do oh. it. There you go. <laughs> oh, no. I'm taking. I'm married now. <laughs> and the roles were sort of reversed today. They made Clint smile more than they did themselves. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> oh, one of these ain't long time ago. <laughs> no, I went to the University of Memphis. Oh, okay. <laughs> and they let you back in Arkansas. They let me back in Arkansas. <laughs> you often feel like, oh man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling sorry for this person. I have some kind of sympathy for it. But when they're making light of it, it makes you feel like, you know what, they're, they're doing good. At least they still have their joy and their sense of humor. So that's always a good thing to have when you're fighting. And yes, they're doing good, but things just get a little bit better when a Super Bowl champ makes a surprise visit. You know, take time out to come, you know, see us guys that are, uh, you know, getting treated for myeloma. You know, that's, that's pretty cool. We worked on Omani, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a big football fan. I'm from Lafayette, Louisiana, so we pull for the Saints, but I, I'm a Tampa Bay fan, too, now. <laughs> He's a hunk, too. <laughs> we all often uh, feel like, you know, we have so many problems in our lives that's going on and, you know, like you say, you be grateful at all times because you could, you never know what type of shape or how type of position you end up in life and these people are living testimony and they're fighting a good fight and they're, they're doing a great job out here. It's a pretty simple question for the Raysian Cajuns. How bad do you want another shot at an SEC opponent? Just one more chance to say they stole a victory from the nation's best conference. Uh, any anytime you get a chance to go into a stadium and play in front of 80,000 fans, and, and I can imagine they're going to be on the Kool-Aid. They're going to be excited. And let's talk about motivation. A day Hog fans will be hard-pressed to forget. Week two of last season, a Sunbelt team gets a victory over the Hogs in Little Rock. A 34-31 loss to Louisiana Monroe. And after watching Monroe get the win in Little Rock, you think the Cajuns would say, hey, we can do this too. Not exactly the case. They're, they're going to be totally refocused. They're going to be, uh, like I said, they're, they're, their players are going to get this thing going again. And last year to me was just a blip on the radar. That program is always strong. They've got a lot of tradition there, and I expect them to come out guns blazing. It was a different situation. They had some things going on. And a lot of distractions last year, and that's nothing taken away from Monroe and, and the game they played against Arkansas last year. But, I mean, it's a new year. They have a brand new coaching staff uh, leading them in a different direction. So, I mean, we're just going in there with our own mindset and, and, and trying to execute our game plan. Also a first-year starter at quarterback that they wouldn't dare look past. Yeah, I, I think Brandon Allen's going to be an exceptional quarterback. He's got the tool set to be, I think, one of the best in the country. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're inexperienced also at some positions, but you know, the only way you get experience is to get experience. And so he's, uh, you know, he's already played, so it's not like this is his first snap he's taken. So it'll be quite a challenge. They've got a lot of good players to go around. As for those Cajun fans, it's almost a no-brainer. clock, let's go ahead and go to the phones, ESPN1420.com, higher on Bird's Eye View. Longtime Bird's Eye View host Jay Walker says this is one confident fan base considering Arkansas's meltdown against the Warhawks last year. I think because UOM won last year, 
Uh, and because we've beaten UL in five straight games, I think that there's an attitude maybe among some of our fan base that we should be able to go to Fayetteville and win. Not to mention last year, the Cajuns traveling to Gainesville and almost taking down the fifth-ranked Florida Gators. Because of the Florida game last year, because Arkansas struggled last year, I think that leads our fan base to believe that this is a winnable football game. Now, they understand that they're going to have to go to Fayetteville. They're going to have to play great football. Uh, coming so close against Florida, they, they had the Gators on the ropes. And, and I think for most fans and maybe even the players, they look at Arkansas, a team that had a bad season last year, as maybe not necessarily a, a winnable game, but more winnable than most years. Anytime you go into the number five team's place in the country and, and play as well as we did, it's got to give you a little confidence that you can, you can play on, on the field with anybody. In Lafayette, Louisiana, Robert Burton, Channel 7 Sports. Hogs in need of a win today after an unexpected loss to Texas A&M Thursday. A lot of things in their favor today. One, they're in Bud Walton. Also, no Casey Prather, Scott Wilbekin, and Patrick Young. Not at 100%. Wouldn't last too long, though. Some good shooting in the first half. Kai Madden with the step back. Three, the Hawks. First three field goals were from three. Five of 12 from beyond the arc in the first half. Later, here's another one of those trays. Anthlon Bell from the corner. Hawks take a five-point lead later. Qualls, who struggled tonight, that won't go, but Kai Madden is there for the cleanup. Hogs would lead by one going into the half. They led the Packers 26-3 going into halftime in the second half came. And that's where we pick things up. Fourth quarter, only up five now. Romo gets in a little trouble until he finds Des Bryant in the end zone. And yes, he does get both feet down. Dallas up 36-24. Green Bay, though, coming right back. Matt Flynn hits James Jones. Packers get within five later. More trouble. Romo throws the pick to Sam Shields. Ouch. It's Green Bay's ball with 250 left. And that would lead to an Eddie Lacy touchdown. Packers up one after that. You can probably call it Ranger Danger today. They were on the verge of being swept by the Blue Jays, and they started this thing off all wrong. The Rangers would trail four to nothing. They wouldn't score until Nelson Cruz sends one high to right center field. That ball gets loose and it's gone. Rangers only trail by three now. Then later in the fourth inning, Chris McGinnis, can you say double? He gets one off the wall. They give David Murphy the signal to score. Rangers only trail by two now, then in the fifth inning.